Katrina series that's made up of um, all things that I found all over New Orleans after Katrina. So I finished that series and now I'm just doing a series of abstract three-dimensional assemblage pieces and uh, that's what I've been working on. That's who I am and nice to be here. Boom. Uh, my name is Tony Scott. I am a uh, multimedia artist. I sculpt, paint, photography, and digital art. I currently have an uh, installation up at the California African American Museum called Bloodlines Inspired from My Family History. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wrapped up a wood carving, I just received a uh, bus commission and, mm -hmm. um, in clay and a marble commission, so wow, those are two projects nice. that I'm working on. I also had the uh, privilege of working with Ed Dwight last year on a few of his projects, and so um, what for the new year, some programming, the CAM, I'm looking forward to being involved with. And, you know, just uh, sharing about uh, our ancestry and, you know, uh, American history, so that's where I'm at right now. My name is Joshua Sullivan. <laughs> I was actually brought in as a consultant by the California Department of Insurance to uh, help deal, work with the with, um, Golden State Mutual Life and to help them determine what should be done with the art collection to determine its value. Yeah. Uh, the best advice I could possibly give them was to keep the collection together, what was left of it. Keep it in Los Angeles, keep it, if, if at all possible, in the building. I got to be very close friends with Bill Paggio during the course of doing this. And um, when I left my consulting gig, I actually accepted a position as the interim executive director of the Golden State Mutual Legacy Foundation, which was this entity that, that we had started uh, in an effort to preserve the, the art collection and the historical materials from Golden State. I mean, we want to keep the collection together, what's left of it. We'd like to reacquire um, some of the pieces that, that are gone now, but we also want to make it a living collection. We want it to, be, to, to build upon what Bill Paggio was doing, incorporate current art. Hi, my name is Charles Gennett. I'm a filmmaker. I'm working on uh, several films. Um, one, the documentary on uh, the segregation of hospitals in the 60s, and the other one is a uh, talking in about a guy who ran around the world. Since you're a filmmaker, why don't you videotape me through one? <laughs> I'll put you, I'll credit you. <laughs> is it, is it all it's on? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm Lily Bernard, and um, I was born in Santiago de Cuba. I immigrated to this country when I was about three. Um, started at the, at the BFA program in Cornell University, mm -hmm. switched out after the first semester, stayed there for three years, and was uh, majoring in um, German, and then uh, took some theater courses, did some acting. I still act. Um, my kids also act. We've got some commercials running. In terms of art, currently I'm working on um, a series of oil paintings where I take classical European, European paintings which were created during the slave era, and I alter them to tell Afro-Caribbean slave stories, and the paintings are rich with symbols of uh, Afro-Cuban folklore and religion, such as the Orishas, and some of them are even about my personal family history. Currently, I'm working on one, Caroline, and it's based after, um, it's after Manet's Olympia. And it's in the room over there if you want to look at it. Zion, who are you? Who's next? I am Rafael Bernard Ferguson. Um, I'm her 
son. And uh, I go to I go to Loyola High School, Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> I'm a freshman there. And, um, that's all I do. My name is Justin Powell, Ron Justin Powell. I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I came to Los Angeles in 1958 accompanying my father. I had every intention of going back to New York, but I found the weather here very pleasant and <laughs> stayed. So I've been here since 1958. Two years after I arrived, I was familiarized with a, a, an icon that exists in Watts called the Watts Towers. And uh, they had recently saved them from destruction, and they wanted to do something related to arts in and around the Watts Tower. So they hired uh, Noah Purifoy, one of the best recycling artists in Southern California, to design an arts program that would teach the value of arts to the community around the towers and, and also uh, publicize the need of further art in the community. So I became attached to the Watts Towers, and specifically Noah Purifoy. I was invited by Noah in about 1960 to come and help him with a project there at the Art Center, getting the Art Center off the ground, if you will. So I am one of the co-founders of the Watts Towers Art Center. He, Noah Purifoy, myself, together with Sue Welsh, and a, and, and a few other people, we founded the Watts Towers Art Center, and I'm glad to say, after 50 odd years, it's still there and growing. I've been doing the arts all my life, music. Uh, I do everything in the arts but dance. I do that. <laughs> Two minutes. I would yield my time on any given day, Mr. Yes, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Serene Jefferson. I run the California African American Museum. Um, I'm a member of the Board of Directors of Cal Arts and on the California uh, Arts Council. I'm an ex-dancer, born and raised in LA, got my Master's in Dance Education from NYU, my undergrad from UCLA. Eventually, when I stopped dancing professionally, went into law for a while, got called by Arthur Mitchell to come run Dance Theater of Harlem, came back in the month of was the former director of Dance Theater of Harlem. And, um, uh, but more importantly, we have up at the museum right now an exhibition called Places of Validation Art Progression, which is actually about the people and places that made it possible for the work of African American artists to be seen in Los Angeles uh, between 1940 and 1980. It's part of the Pacific Standard Time Project. There are 90 artists in our show and 180 works. We, are, we have within that 60 of the works that are currently still unsold from the Golden State Mutual Life Insurance Collection. We tried to talk with Golden State before it had gone into liquidation about trying to buy the collection, which was something that you couldn't get the president to have a conversation around. We, we do actually have goals to try to um, buy the rest of the collection. Um, and, I, and we, in the process of the 60 works that are up right now, we did conservation on about five of them and reframed many of them. My name is Sam Pace. I grew up in West Covina, California, in the 60s when there was none of us there, just my family and another family. And um, I'm a visual artist, currently working on a sculpture on uh, Charlie Parker. And most of my work consists around music and jazz. And I'm my full-time job is at LACMA, and I'm here representing LACMA unofficially. Mm -hmm. um, I have to report to uh, Brooke. I'm what do you do there, Mike? Uh, I'm a preparer. <laughs> My name is Dwayne Paul. Um, um, I am a visual artist, primary, well, mixed media, primarily um, sculpture and um, paintings. Um, the work is more abstract. Um, the sculptural work are um, uh, abstract, um, organic forms that are an outfit I created of different forms of numbering about 60 that come together and play with different um, utilitarian um, materials like ties or string and something to build into these kind of like 
um, florid kind of sculptures um, that sort of like tells whatever story that I, I, I do to tell at the, at the time. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is uh, about sensuality, sexuality, um, and you know, politics and race mixed in, depending on the um, mode or whatever it seeps in through subconscious. I also do this in, um, installation the work can be abstract and then there's a different body of work that's very figurative but uh, uh, very illustrative because I studied illustration at Parsons. I found a way to basically bring the two together um, because it really talks about uh, what's going on in the world a bit more directly and didactically. Um, like blending, you know, music and poetry and words together. Are we two? We two. All right, done. <laughs> I'm Jane Castillo, installation artist, born in East LA, and grew up in La Puente. My BA is uh, from Cal State Fullerton, my MFA from Claremont Graduate University. I uh, currently teach as an elementary art teacher for LAUSD, and uh, in January I'll be teaching at MODIS too, so I, I like to work on both extremes. Mm -hmm. um, my installation work is pretty big. I was in my first biennial just uh, about a month ago, and I have a big, giant two story mural at Cerritos College that they liked enough to keep it. So. Congratulations. What are you going to teach at Otis? I'm teaching the beginning art education class. Oh, that's very good. Okay, I'm Zeal Harris. I'm from Hampton, Virginia. Actually, specifically Phoebus, but it's a little small town that's next to Hampton University. And I went to Howard University for undergrad. And uh, when I was a teenager, I did portraits and caricatures at Bush Gardens Colonial Williamsburg Amusement Park. And that comes into my work now, so it's a combination of sort of like southern, um, it's southern and it's urban at the same time, and it's sort of folky vernacular, and it's also sort of political cartoony, and I do a variety of subject matter from everyday life to um, history and political topics, and I work at Otis right now, and I did my MFA at Studio Art at Otis. We do it at I work in one of the administrative offices, and I work in the digital media office. How do you know Beverly Bledsoe? I don't know her, but I know her name. She's on the school school. Oh. Hi, everyone. I'm Edgar Arsenault. I'm an artist. And uh, I grew up here in Los Angeles up until I was 12, where I moved to West Covina. And uh, I just remember that we met through work at LACMA in the cafe. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. No, I don't know. I remember you. So I wasn't the second black family there, but we were part of that next wave of folks. Oh, you're in there. I was in there. I feel sorry for you. <laughs> so, so much yeah, for West oh, yeah. Yeah, which is adjacent to La Um There's not much culture in San Gabriel Valley, unfortunately. Um, I'm a practicing artist. Um, do a lot of drawings and installations and stuff. Um, and I also run a... Um, neighborhood redevelopment organization called the Watts House Project, which is an um, artist-driven neighborhood redevelopment. We're um, based in the neighborhood that surrounds the Watts Towers. Hmm. So artists and architects and families working together to bring about their homes. I've been involved with that for maybe 15 years in 2012. And uh, I've been making art in the studio and been involved with community practice for about the same amount of time. Uh, excellent. And I've been painting mainly oils on canvas. Um, I was traveling quite a bit and I just got influenced by all the places I was going, pretty much uh, mainly in South America and Central America, Caribbean, places like that. And it had a big influence on my work. And right now I'm working on a series of Orishas, um, mainly, uh, mainly in the Afro Brazilian style. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, and, and that's pretty much where I'm right now. My name is Donna Andrews. Uh, my dad died, and uh, I was 65, and I got some money, and um, uh, decided I would uh, go to Otis College of Art and Design and fill the dream, because I was raised in New Brunswick, New Jersey, where it was a college town. All my life, I wanted to get a degree, but I didn't you know, sacrifice to get that. So I graduated with honors. Um, I had a, my, a, a whole woman show. Uh, I've had about six or seven shows. I've been at the California African Art Museum. I finished three, two six foot by seven paintings, two women dancing to tango, 
and I'm doing a lady yeah. now dancing, and um, I just feel like uh, I died and I went to heaven. And to be with all of you, I am so honored. Thank you very much. Uh, Stephen Butler, I'm the managing director of the Abaco Foundation, which is underwriting the cost uh, for the Golden State Mutual Legacy Foundation to be seated and to raise the money to make it a viable organization. And so um, I'm just thankful to Lily for hosting this after my conversation with her and uh, talking about this idea to build an endowment for the Golden State Mutual Collection and an organization that would uh, preserve the collection but also um, help local artists in the community as well as develop art education programs to preserve the legacy of Golden State Mutual. I am delighted that the Pacific Standard Time book has the Watts Towers on the front cover, mm. right next to the label that says Pacific Standard Time 1945 to 1980. I said, but the problem is that the reality is that between 1945 and 1980, the Getty didn't give a shit, mm -hmm. excuse me, I'm sorry, there's children, mm -hmm. I forgot, sorry, mm -hmm. about the Watts Towers. No. Okay, three things. <laughs> um, uh, venues, access to venues, and places to show our work, which also means Venues. I know that's a lot of that is up to us to get out there and attack the venues. I'm trying to crack that nut on the west side. A lot of us, you know, we, we show in our community quite a bit, and that's a beautiful thing. But there's that little niche over there called Bergamot Station in Culver City that we seem to not have many opportunities in on a regular basis. And uh, God forgive me for saying it, we seem to be redlined out of certain neighborhoods, and I don't mean to make a, a racist statement about anything, but that's a nut over there that I, I would like to see a lot of us have the opportunity to, to crack. The, the Bergamot, the West Side, Culver City, you know, for what it's worth, not that we need them to legitimize what we are, but that's it. And venues. Boom. No, I'm um, your point. Okay. Um, just a point in question. Just a second. A point in question. At the Arts Center for the last 50 odd years, our goal really has been to promote the arts to the extent that we reinstate the arts in the public education system in a different way. We're after reinventing the arts so it can be reapplied in our public education system. Art teaches the individual to be creative, and we all possess that need to exercise our own individual creativity. And the arts is the vehicle or the avenue that allows us to do that. But it ultimately resolves itself into public education. And that's what we at the Arts Center has been about for the last 50 years. Reintroducing a public education medium that our country is in desperate need of. Ed, did you want to make three? Uh... I was going to say housing for artists I think is important. Housing. Uh, housing. Like affordable housing. Okay. Live workspaces are important. I would agree with Justin that you know being seen as an asset to public education is important and there's a lot of artists who um, would love to be part of the public education system. I think that's also um, very important. Um, and the third thing is I think there needs to be um, some sort of mechanism for constructive and engaging dialogue mm -hmm. to happen. I think that on one level it's the facilitation of conversations like this. Yes. You know, because there's a lot of people in this room who I've never met and I'm happy to have met them. Mm -hmm. And it kind of starts there. We have some type of forum grow out of this and we get together on a quarterly, monthly basis with someone, everybody bring the last piece they ever put their hands on, bring it and we sit around and critique each other's work. That, that's what they did at the Brockman Gallery. Remember the Brockman Gallery. Ruth Wiley had us once a week mm -hmm. to come through. And she took out things to the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. She got on the bus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and traveled around and collected. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, she exerted herself. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we need to exert ourselves a little more. Yeah, and come together. And, and come together. And so do you have to do of what you're doing with that work. So that's good. A forum is where we can get together. But that's not as large as this is. It's too big.
Okay, I'm going to make an interruption before we pick up with Tony Scott. Yeah. The Fergusons just came in the house. Right, Ferguson. oh, these Fergusons. Not us Fergusons, other Fergusons. We got a seat for you right here, brother. Mr. Cecil Ferguson, his oh, son Kintia, his wife Miss Miriam, and uh, their legends also in L.A. Mr. Uh, Ferguson was the first uh, black to serve in a curatorial position at LACMA, and his son uh, Kintia has a wonderful uh, radio show where he uh, features artists. And Ms. Mrs. Ferguson Miriam is our curator. She has the show right now at William Branstill Arts Center on the Black Doll Show. How you doing? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Let me introduce you quickly, my friend Charles Burnett. Hi, Charles. Hi, Hi. Edgar Arsenault. Hi. I think you're going to be here to eight. I don't know. I know. Bro, oh. I know you know me. You all look the same. Uh, we all look the same. <laughs> Would you like a cup with that? Is that the cup? Oh, my All right, so. Oh. Okay. Well, you know, I wanted to um, no. second that question about having an art alliance oh, okay. by artists. I know there's an art group sharing yeah. information where we can find out about opportunities. I would also say, you know, some business consultants, you know, with marketing. Uh, a group of, uh, of, of professionals that are in Los Angeles that we can go to, the marketing of art is a very specialized field, you know, yes. and not having to, most artists don't have the money to go and, and pay for that, that service. So I'd say, you know, having that sort of consultant, uh, things like with uh, contracts and things of that sort, people that we can go to that are a resource to us. And that alliance, too, is setting some standards. You know, I do a lot of shows. And people are always asking me to donate this because yeah. so-and-so donated that piece. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's like, you know, this is what I get paid for. Yeah, absolutely. You know. So yeah. having a communication and having an alliance, a, you know, a united front to say, no, you know, this is where we draw the line. We're not donating it. If you want it, you buy it. And then we all agree on that. And then they'll stop hitting up one artist or another artist to try to get free things for charities because the artists, we need, we're a charity too. We need the same sort of donations and support. So. Uh, we tried to get an organization where we had cinemas in the theater with digital cinemas, but we can never get beyond just a discussion. You know, it. And it takes a different kind of a person to, to do that. Being a filmmaker, I'm always engaged in something else all the time. So I, I start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. If I need to come in with something, it's kind of like going, be a part of it. But the main thing is have a, a discussion with the audience, with, with, with the community, because for me, Making a film and just having it shown somewhere in God knows where, it doesn't do me any good. I mean, you know, you can get paid sort of thing like that, but I'm, I'm not really interested in that part of it. Mm -hmm. I want to help to develop, you know, the black experience in a sense. Mm -hmm. and tell those stories. Mm -hmm. and you, have to, you have to develop that market. You have to develop in, in the community, you know. Um, there's a lot of issues that um, it makes almost difficult to do. So more Can I ask you a question? Do you think it's important to me if somebody in this room has a truck and maybe they can... <laughs> 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 you, you just said something that, I mean, when you said it, three yeah. things came to my mind. The note I'm writing is not that I'm writing down what everybody said. It was like, oh, you know what? We could probably have some conversations. Yeah, to Listening to it, and it's, um, you know, that's, that's a vehicle to it for exposure. I think it starts with seeing ourselves as commodities and viable, viable um, creative people in the world. Um, and the, the idea of, of, of color and um, defining your art is, is kind of like that gray area. It's just good if it's good, it's great if it's great. It's just about supporting, finding a way to support great work or what you see in, in, in blossoming as great work. So, the problem with the grant system is that the, the boards change their some materials. Like one week it's video, the next week it's you know a symbolage or whoever is on the on the board. It's important mm -hmm. to know about these people, mm -hmm. your, your predecessors. Mm -hmm. Yes. You you just can't do all these things that you're talking about mm -hmm. and do your work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You really need somebody to document things yeah. for you. Yeah. And critics. Yeah. 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 I, I heard Dominique, we need to say that before track. I encourage more students who are going very right. I took some students out of classics and put them into art history. Oh. I mean, 
So basically, we would need like our wives, right? Like the, the wife behind the scenes that's doing all the business and everything. That's pretty much what we need, as well as the venue. I mean, with the grant applications, you know, we are our own CEOs. We're the grants um, department. We're the PR department. We're the you know, business development department, we're production, we're, you know, we're everything. Marketing, yeah. And we're, we're all of it, and it's, we're tired. You know, we need that support. Um, we just basically need our support team. Yeah. The talent and a tendency that is resented by a lot of people, because we always think in terms of making better use of what already exists. I have an MFA and you know I've shown and exhibited here but I still feel that what other people have said I can just say the same thing professional development um, venues more places to show actually I've worked in art galleries they're not black art galleries